Hey, so this video, as with all my videos, I'd like people to just take note of one thing. Um, all I ask when people watch my videos is to listen to the end, or at least hear my perspective on this before jumping to conclusions. I have had the experience of some people have commented on my videos and the blatant they haven't listened to what I've been saying. So I don't mind people disagreeing with me, but all I ask is that you at least watch and and listen. To be fair, most of those who comment do that. Um, here in the UK, we have a phenomenon called lad culture or laddish culture. And it's sort of around this concept that I want to base this video. Um, it probably has different terminologies in different parts of the world and it is a phenomenon that almost certainly does exist all over the world. I think it's something that crosses cultural divides. Um, it's not just something that's found in Britain or in Europe or in the Western world. I think it is a truly global phenomenon. Now, I haven't spoken much about this because it's not something that I give a great deal of thought to, but I felt the need to upload this video because I came across footage, albeit from, I believe, August last year, but it's something that is still pretty topical. Um, I mean, not the particular incident I'm going to talk about, but the general concept. Um, there was a, an unlicensed boxing match somewhere in London and, and a riot broke out. Well, clearly this is not headline news. It's not a major, major issue in the grand scheme of things. Nevertheless, um, it's a little unsettling to watch on the grounds that when you have basically that sort of anarchy at a sporting event, it can potentially be dangerous. Now, first thing you notice is this was an unlicensed event, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have a riot in a licensed event. Um, here in the UK, we have a very long track record of trouble breaking out at sporting events it's more known for breaking out in football matches but or soccer to my american viewers but it definitely happens at boxing matches as well and we've got a long track record unfortunately of that happening now to put things in context because i don't want to exaggerate here the majority of sporting events go ahead trouble free the majority of sporting events whether they be football matches or boxing matches go ahead with no trouble as an example, my own boxing event, um, you know, there was 19 fights taking place, no trouble whatsoever. Um, the crowd was well behaved, you know, they were passionate, there was cheers and so on, but um, it was a trouble-free night, and that's the way it should be. Um, because boxing, and I'm using that as an example because it's the sport I'm most familiar with, is a very rugged, boisterous sport, you always have security at these events, and especially in big, big title fights like those in Vegas and Madison Square Garden and the O2 in London, there's always quite high security. Um, to be honest, it's a pity that there needs to be any security at all. It's a pity that there needs to be a situation where there is always a potential for some jackass to ruin things by letting their partisan support go too far or not being able to handle the drink, or whatever it is. Um, basically, if you are from outside the UK and you're not familiar with what lad culture is, I'll try and describe it, and I'll try to explain why I am very critical of it. Um, and also to counter a few, let's say, misconceptions about those who are critical of it. Um, firstly, lad culture in its worst form is basically sort of a form of anarchy because it is a situation where men um and i'm not saying there isn't a female equivalent there is especially in the uk there is ladette culture but i'm focusing particularly on this video on lad culture you know i'll have another video i'm sure or i'm sure i have had another video for ladette culture which I have contempt for, but, um, you know, that's for another video. That culture can basically be summed up as men, particularly young men, 
although not exclusively young men, but particularly young men, let's say roughly between the ages of 16 to 30, roughly speaking, um, having this kind of anarchy, this anarchy, uh, uh, this sort of um, anarchist mentality, and I don't mean in the political sense, I don't mean anarchy is in rebellion against government, I mean just anarchy is in having no self-control. Um, and it's uh, it's something that's very, very obvious. Now, this, uh, this event that I specifically mentioned didn't appear to be between supporters specifically of the two fighters. There's the two fighters themselves, it didn't seem to be any, the fight was over, and it didn't seem to be any sort of contention with the result. Um, it may have been, I don't know, because, you know, it's only a partial video. But usually in boxing riots, it starts when the fighters have some aggro between each other. And that didn't seem to be the case here. So it looked to me, and granted I wasn't there, but it looked to me that they, they, this was opportunism. Probably too much alcohol. Um, clearly in the video you can see some older people, whether it be relatives of the, the idiots involved, I don't know, holding them back. But, you know, it was quite ugly scenes. There was chairs thrown. There was beer bottles thrown. It's, um, and the thing is, it's very easy to dismiss this and think it's funny or whatever, but there is always a risk of someone getting seriously hurt. Now, that might sound like a stupid thing to say at a boxing event, but the thing is this. Boxers, whether it be an on-license or a license event, the boxers train for the fight. They are... They are involved in a controlled situation where there is a referee, where they have a specific purpose, where they're certainly not drunk, where it's controlled aggression. Now, when you get jackasses fighting outside the ring, um, they are putting others in danger. They're putting women and children in danger. Personally, I don't think children should be at boxing match. Um, that's my own view on the matter. I know sometimes you get children who are like the the children of a particular fighter. Personally, I feel a little uneasy about that. Um, except maybe maybe in the really big events where it's a bit more controlled. I I don't know, but I'm uneasy about that. Um. So yeah, you get this sort of mob mentality that takes over, and there is a la ladette culture, which is the female equivalent, but. It probably is more prevalent among young men, if we're being completely honest. Um, and it's it's bullshit. It is basically bullshit. Um, and I think all responsible guys need to... I'm not saying crusade against it, but at least, at least acknowledge that it is bullshit. Because that's what it is. It, it sort of comes down to this mentality that to prove you're a real man, or to prove that you are one of the guys, you have to act like a complete jackass. Get into pointless fights with strangers that you barely even know. Uh, drink yourself stupid. Um, smash up property. Th this is not the behaviour of a responsible, self-controlled man. This is the behaviour of a jackass. Um, there's nothing honourable about that. There's nothing manly about that. And when it happens at sporting events, the reason it's problematic is because it's an uncontrolled situation. You know, they're putting other people at risk. If you're chucking a chair across the room, you might think you're throwing it at your opponent, whoever that might be. But when there are other people there, when there's women there, you know, there might be older people there. There's uh, people who can't exactly defend themselves from a drunk young moron. And that's why it's problematic. Now, People might say I'm old fashioned or I'm being square or whatever. And I have been in this debate before where people have argued, oh, it's just lads having banter. This really pisses me off, this terminology of banter. Now, that isn't even the worst example I can give. There are other examples whereby you get so called laddish behaviour, um, which just amounts to downright low level criminality. And there's nothing manly about degrading women, about 
picking fights with the police just for the sake of it, about destroying property. These are the actions of brain dead morons. And I think it is, it's basically a card's excuse that you're just following the crowd. It's camaraderie. It's male bonding. This is bullshit. You can have male bonding. You can have heterosexual, heterosexual alpha male bonding without reducing yourself to a jackass. Now, this is the point I want to kind of clarify because when guys like me speak about this, the automatic assumption is, oh, you're a better male, you're feminized, you are, you're gay. Um, wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm not a better male. I consider myself alpha in many ways. Um, you know, I'm the sort of man that wants to protect my woman. I, I like boxing, which is a pretty macho sport, to put, you know, for want of a better term. Um, I certainly don't consider myself a better male. Um, as for me being feminized, well, you know, it relates to the first point. I'm not feminized at all. Um, and I'm a huge critic of feminism, so that directly counters the point. And gay, well, I'm not gay. Um, not that that is something that is a point to critique, but I'm just not. I'm not gay. Um, so to me, that just demonstrates that there's a void argument. Now, to be clear here, I have absolutely no problem with a group of young men having a good time. And that's something that, you know, is completely natural, completely understandable. But there has to be a rejection of this idea that anything goes. And young adult men have no excuse for acting like jackasses. You know, it's a cop-out to blame alcohol or to blame um, peer pressure or anything like that. If you are a free-thinking adult, you take some damn responsibility for your own actions. And I personally take the view that anyone causing trouble at a sporting event should be given, if not a lifetime ban, then a very lengthy ban from attending any sporting event of that nature again. It might sound harsh, but there has to be a hard line against this sort of bullshit because it, it can put others at risk. It really can. You know, people might think it's a trivial thing, but when you're throwing bottles across a crowded room, that can be a lethal weapon. Or if not lethal, it can cause serious damage. I'm not exaggerating. You know, there has been examples of people losing eyesight, of being seriously injured in those sort of circumstances. So it really isn't a trivial thing. And when you get drunk yobs acting in that way, I've been in that situation. And I'm no pushover, but I don't mind admitting it is an intimidating situation. And not because any of those individuals are intimidating. Individually, they're, they're absolute chicken shits. But it's that mob mentality, which is very ugly and very, um, it's just, it's not a manly thing to do at all. And responsible men need to send out that message. It's a bit like when you have a, a gang, and this is probably going to a more extreme example, but when you have a gang and they attack an individual, it doesn't matter if that individual is an innocent member of the public or a lone rival gang member, it is the absolute epitome of cowardice to gang up on someone in that way. And I think those sort of gangs are the scum of the earth. Um, you know, to be clear here, I'm not talking about being white or the white. I'm not talking about being monk-like, um, being puritanical. It's not about that. You can have a good time. You can have a beer. You can, you know, basically do what you want, but doesn't mean you have a remit to disrespect or degrade other people in that sort of way. Have a good time, but don't be a jackass. Um, and it really pisses me off when this so-called lad culture is dismissed as banter. You know, there's nothing banter. The banter is not bullying people. It's not degrading women and that sort of thing. And this has nothing to do with political correctness. It's nothing to do with being feminized. It's nothing to do with any of the other nonsensical claims that go against guys like me. Now, okay, there will be 
people like that who maybe are a bit too sensitive take issue with certain things. And, you know, I have really no problem with a group of young men having a good time, having drinks, watching a sporting event and, you know, playing card games or all the rest of it that can be considered male bonding. I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem when it gets out of hand and then and then they won't take individual responsibility for it. That's bullshit. And it needs to be called out. Um, you know, so let me know your thoughts on this. I'm sure there's a equivalence in the US and all over the world. And this is a global phenomenon. I've seen it all over the world. Um, just as another example, it's definitely, I know it's a phenomenon in parts of Latin America where machismo culture is seen as a, a great thing. Um, definitely it can be seen all over the world. But there has to be a standard for men to look up to that isn't this. And when I say a standard to look up to, I'm not talking about feminized men. I'm not talking about being whiter than white and being puritanical. I'm just saying that there has to be a degree of responsibility. That is what real men do. They take self-responsibility. They will follow the crowd like a brainwashed jackass. Nothing wrong with having fun, nothing wrong with having a good time, nothing wrong with any of that. But there has to be some sense of self-responsibility. I really believe that. Let me know your thoughts. Cheers.